a way, there's these empty symbols of citizenship and nationality and pride, all these civic symbols that I feel like, personally, I'm completely detached from. And if I think maybe success is if it somehow can be attached to a personal story. So when you're left, you're left with this key, it's an intersection between those two things. I think for me, that would be a kind of success, that it makes you think a little bit about citizenship as well as friendship. I love a city. And, uh, and I love this city, and I feel like I make so much work that it's like you hop on a plane, you go somewhere. It's corny, but I feel like this is for my people. This is for my city. Yeah. And, uh, and I think of it very specifically that way. So, yes. Paul, we're in the queue. What is, what is the... Just give me a quick outline of what the basics of the project is. The way Key to the City works is that you arrive here, and you stand in line, and then you will be given a booklet, you will be prepped for the ceremony where you give the key to the person you came with or that you met in line. Then you step up to the commons and there's an empty plinth, so to speak, and that empty plinth holds the books that you fill out with a record of the ceremony. And then you're asked to perform the ceremony by speaking it out loud and then you bestow the key on someone else. And then you have this key that opens 24 sites around the city. Washington and uh, Miss Sylvester Gardner. Oh. Ah, it's a little Fabergé display. This is normally a sort of a storage space. This was actually one of the most interesting conversations. They said, well, what, what do you want us to put inside? Mm. And I said, well, my artwork is to open this door, but now yeah. this is just another space in the museum, so it's really it's it's the purview of the curator. It's yeah. like a new curatorial space. So yeah. they thought about it, and I think if I understood correctly, they don't collect decorative European arts. So even though they own these objects, they actually have no context to show them. Ah, oh, okay, so it's like a lost collection. Right, they're like, we would actually really never show this, yeah. because we don't have, so it would be perfect to show it here, because we actually yeah. will rarely ever have an opportunity to show it. It's, what's interesting is that the, um, there was a real clear division of authorship. Always invited people to do with it whatever they mm. want. It's sort of trying to build a little bit of constituency, like there's something in this for you. Mm. What do you want to do with it? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's something in it for me. This is what I want to do with it. Yeah. Um, right, so it's like, look, I'm, I'm choosing this and I'm choosing this, but you can choose what goes in there. And yeah. uh, try, try to make it happen. Also because in a way it's like, to make people participate is the different venues. I mean, I know you, you've written about different publics, but I think like, there's almost three mm. publics here. It's you, there's the people in all the institutions, in the, all the and, institutions uh, venue, and then there's the people who go along with the key and the map. And right, try. and there'll be like a third audience later that only knows about this project through yeah. documentation or hearsay. So why keys? What do they, what do they symbolize for you? Is it about access or exchange? Or? A little bit, but I think it's funny because I think uh, that it, it is like a monument. It's made of metal. Mm. It's permanent. It has certain civic ideas. Um, you know, it's not abstract necessarily. Mm -hmm. So um, I keep thinking that this is a small sculpture. <laughs> so I have more questions for you about sure. this, but maybe we do that at another point. We're at Gracie Mansion, which is sort of the White House of the city. City Hall is where the mayor holds his office, and, sit, and Gracie Mansion is where the mayor but, lives. But This is the real key to the city. After we had the initial meeting at the, in the city hall, mm -hmm. when the meeting was over, someone said, follow me. And then we went to the front desk where the guards are, mm -hmm. and then they pulled out a key. That was just a regular mm -hmm. old key. And they're like, we want to show you something. This key is a replica of these keys. And then, right. and then that key, they took me to the back and it opened the back door of city hall like this old oh, antique okay. wooden, and yeah. then it was a really... So this is a copy of that, so it, it's sort yeah, of I don't, used, I don't think it, it really used, it works, but they've copied all the design yeah. to... And it was an interesting moment where I, I kept pitching that this is symbolic and I want to bring it down into mm. a, a, a kind of reality, and... Um, but then to realize that even the symbol is actually a replica of a real key yes. that opens a real yeah. building. But, but you were talking to me about uh, who is the audience. Yes, and tell me more about how you... Can well, what's interesting audience. is that for me, I mean, it may sound uh, controversial, but in a way, I don't care about the tour. Mm -hmm. 
to me is that to make it desirable, the audience comes to this one point in Times mm -hmm. Square. And then right there, there's a merging. There's this, mm -hmm. and then there's the personal reason why people are awarding it mm -hmm. to each other. And then this kind of civic, collective story gets uh, welded mm -hmm. in, so that you will have this that opens all these sides. Mm -hmm. But it's not really about it being the artwork. It's also like a present, the same way that I may keep a half-chewed carrot that my best friend gave me <laughs> on certain circumstance and that has a very specific meaning so I feel like yeah. the, the two things get welded at that moment yeah. the key to the city that I made and the personal private reason why it was given mm. and that meaning is not inscribed in the key what at all mm. it's just through the memory of the, of the viewer mm. I think that the sites themselves are are the sites themselves. Yeah, you know? they're a combination of tourist sites and extremely banal sites. Yeah, yeah there's nothing special or, or not special about mm. them. It's just that it could have been a map with dots and go to these places. Yeah. Um, it, for me, it's just that they, they make the key real. So how do you think this work is playing out for uh, the multiple audiences in this work? For tourists, for the art world, for people who live and work right. in Times Square? Well, I came from a generation in the early 90s where we were trying to play with that triumvirate of documentation, performance, relic, you know, and each one served it. But in, in the end, we were trying to make all of those for the same audience. And I think that has slowly evolved through different colleagues into, you know what, they're just different audiences and different audiences need different things. And it's better to don't mix and match. You know, it's like, think about this is this. For this audience, it means mm. this thing. So I think, I hope it's playing out um, well that each person, that for each type of audience, it offers a different kind of thing. Like, the, the nearest experience I could find to this is a biennial. Yeah? So it feels exactly mm. like you've created a biennial, but with no works of art in it. Yeah? Instead, mm. there's just, there are just situations that you go to and that you can unlock. And, it, right. and I had exactly that feeling of, oh, when you've got the map and you've got, okay, all these things I need to go and find. Right. Well, a biennial if, without art. Discuss. Well, <laughs> well, if curators are going to become artists, well, we're going to have our revenge. No. <laughs> uh, no, I think that in a way, it's like the project is actually extremely complex in my mind because mm. there's all these things. Like I think of, uh, I'm making a sculpture. It's this little key. I'm also making this um, this travelogue through the city or mm. this remapping of the city mm. through the map and the key. I'm also creating this opportunity for people to speak. But I think there's so much apathy in participation. I feel like mm. all the... Apathy in participation? How do you mean? Like, I feel like there's so much interest in making work that is um, interactive or participatory. Mm. But I feel like if you're going to make that kind of work, the point of departure should be that the given is that the viewer is apathetic. The viewer mm. does not want to participate. And that the piece has to have that built into it. But do you think that's true? Because I, I think, think over, the, over the history of the 20th century, I think people have more and more want to participate in works of art. To the point now where we have a heightened volunteerism. Yes, but what is participation? Like, if I come to an artwork and I press a button and the piece That's turns interactivity. on. That's interactivity. Interactivity. I think there's a confusion Participation for me is always social. It's a social yes. dynamic. Yes. And that's why I think that it's important for me that the moments of participation in this piece be mm. not interactivity, but mm. participation. Mm. You know, it's like... Uh, so that would be the, uh, the moment when the key is exchanged and you're given yes. the key rather than the moment when you go and unlock the key. Exactly. Although, thinking of something very nice that a student pointed me to the other week, which is a little excerpt of a quote where John Cage and Stockhausen are commiserating each other at the end of a concert. Mm. And Cage is really upset because people have not performed his piece well. Yeah? And yet it's uh -huh. also an extremely open instruction yeah. piece. And Stockhausen replies to him something along the lines of, don't worry, you know, you've basically got to give people not much freedom, you know. If you give them only a small mm. amount of freedom, they could know what to do with it. But you can't give them total freedom. Right, well, it's a very old problem. It's, a, it's the old Dionysian versus Apollo. It's mm. like uh, you look at, you're Apollonian, you look at, you reason, you're thoughtful, or you're Dionysian, you're in it, you're the artwork, mm. but whew, you're drunk, yeah. you know. Uh, and I feel in the past I used to alternate between making works that were mm. participatory, but perhaps shallow because they were just mm. an experience and that would be disappointing. Yeah. And then works that were uh, more hardcore and mm. invited you to reason about them and they were mm. less popular. And, uh, and I think when <laughs> I finally realized is that, I realized that the, the work had to be engaging but it had to demand from the viewer, even mm. if it demanded very little. So mm. I've made pieces where it demands a penny or it demands that you speak out loud, but that you have to give something to mm. get something from the artwork. Mm. And I felt like the threshold can be quite low 
but, it, but there has to be a threshold. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just in an ice cream truck going around the city throwing keys to the city, and that, that would just not work. Yeah. What's interesting is the devolution of power temporarily. temporarily. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, it's, that's why I keep thinking, it's like the piece has all these layers, but at the very top, that is the... That's one of the primary themes. Right, and, and, and you know, like the, the Trojan horse mm. art theory that I grew up with. In a way, like that was a very simplistic idea is that the artwork yeah. is a virus that infiltrates. Yeah. And uh, now I, I see there's a more complicated situation where mm. all these things are happening mm. uh, through this one artwork. Mm.